We're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, and we will read verse 1. So evolutionists, their magic wand, always, always, this is like a magic wand. They always use this. So remember this, because with every evolutionist, this is like their final authority. Without this, evolution falls apart. It's called time, Mr. Time. Time is an essential ingredient in evolution because we will all argue there's no way that by accident, by chance, it's created. That's, I mean, common sense shows that it can't create by itself. Everyone, and I mean everyone, agrees with it. But how they make it sound logical is you add time with that. But what if we were to add, you know, like, let's say 100 years pass? Wouldn't there be small changes with the object? And then you add millions of years, wouldn't there be bigger changes after that? Then you add billions of years, you can see a whole bunch of changes, right? See, that's how their mind works. And then people are like, oh, that seems to make sense. You know, that seems to make sense. So how they always do it, okay, with time. When you add it with time, then it turns into creation. But time can't do it by itself. So you have to have a thing. Once you have a thing and then you got time, then it turns into creation. But you know what? How silly that sounds. It's like saying thing. So let's say right here, and I'm not kidding you, okay? I'm going to give you a, <laughs> a children's story. A frog transforms into a handsome prince by a kiss. Now, evolutionists, they would like to scream on top of their lungs, that's not true, that's not true, but uh, I actually posted a video a long time ago, they actually believe in that kind of nonsense, actually, that where there's like a certain cow that goes inside the water and it becomes a whale, actually. <laughs> but it doesn't become like that, you just always add time, 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 then that ingredient works. I guess if you keep kissing that frog, <laughs> it might transform into something really not great. Now, the thing is this, is that this is still very amateur, okay? You can see that by this logic here. You just can't add something like that, and then you think a drastic change occurs. But let's go with their time. That's their main ingredient, okay? Now, there's a famous scientist. Uh, he worked uh, really well with this math. His last name is Wald, W-A-L-D. But he argued this way. He argued the probability and the chances that you increase more time, it does not uh, create the better chances for you. Chances still remain the same. So let me give an, an example right here, all right? So let's start with point number one, okay? When you add time, okay, chances remain the same. So let me give an example of a bunch of marbles in a jar, okay? Now let's say that I put a bunch of black colored marbles in a jar and there's a one uh, white marble in the jar okay if you uh, when we add a lot of time so to speak okay so then when you take out one marble out and another marble out eventually the chances get smaller and smaller and uh, you get more better chances to reach that white marble eventually right yeah but here's the thing evolutionists see that's what they think in this kind of logic right here, that's what they think. They think that eventually you're going to hit that white marble because when you add more time and keep taking out the black marbles, you're going to eventually hit it right here. But see, that's not how the universe works. What you got to understand is this, that you don't just take out one black marble and put it aside. What happens is this, when you take out that one black marble out, you have to put it back in the jar. That's how the universe works. Because all matter and energy, you see, you got to understand, it's not going to like, uh, when you add more time, then the dots are going to connect with one good chance. And then you add more time, the dots are going to connect with another good chance and another good chance. No, no, no. It starts back to the same thing. Nothing changes. So that's what Wald argued right there. Chances remain the same. But here's another thing. If there is something that, a certain chance that you want to hit, it becomes worse. Chances not only remain the same, chances become worse.
basically it's even common sense of in life if you tried something over and over again and it doesn't work what does it show you this is not the right method i should try a new method see that's just even common sense so let me give a like a extremely crude example here okay so let's say that you want to break out of prison and then you want to so you're going to punch that prison door and you're like saying well you had enough time millions of years you know keep doing this over and over again eventually the 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 bolts are gonna you know come a little bit loose and i'll get out you know but here's the thing if you were an inmate in solitary confinement and you kept doing that for one whole day okay what happens do, do, does your hopes get higher or lower it gets lower right why because you know this is not working day number two what happens you keep doing it day number three it gets you keep doing it it doesn't happen what happens? It proves to you when you keep doing that, chances become even worse after that. See? It's showing you that, hey, this is not working. You're going to have to try a different method. Now, you might say, well, that's an extreme crude example. Well, let me tell you something right here. That's more fair as an example compared to creating the whole shebang of the whole universe. Okay? That's really, like, impossible right there. Evolutionists pay attention to them. They're always going to say that even though the mathematical odds are really high, see, if you add time, millions of years, that, that calculation is going to shrink like that. No, that's not how it works. It becomes even worse, actually. But here's the biggest proof. The scientific law is called second law of thermodynamics. I always use this. And this one is the best thing to use. Second law of thermodynamics, it's basically the law of entropy. And what that basically means is this. What that means is all matter and energy, everything you can think of that we're all created with in this whole universe, all matter and energy, they break apart. They break apart. They don't evolve and become better. See, they all break apart more. So like, for example, you leave a bread outside by itself, it doesn't turn into a fancy cake. It becomes moldy and yucky. See, it gets worse and worse and worse. It breaks apart. Leave a car running by itself, okay, forever, you know it will break apart. You know it's not going to evolve. But this is how you can work with evolution here with Second Law. Let's even give them a, a hundred years. In a hundred years, they finally hit some sort of jackpot somewhere. How many more steps till you reach manhood and the creation of the whole universe? By the time you reach the evolving stage, guess what? The breaking apart stage is far faster than the evolving stage. You see that? So by the time you reach the evolving stage, oh, I'm hitting the chances, I'm hitting the chances. And then that whatever that matter and energy is, it finally evolved and changed into something else. Oh, we got it. By that time, when you add 100 years, you already had so many different things breaking apart. Yeah. See that? Because when you add more time, that increases entropy. You add more time, what? The breaking apart, there are so many things broken apart already. You leave a car running by itself for one whole day, two whole days, what happens to entropy? What happens to the breaking apart? It gets even what? Bigger and bigger and bigger, right? See that? So by the time they reach the evolving stage, the de-evolving stage, so to speak, has increased even more, a hundred times more. So this is actually, time is not the friend of evolution. It's the greatest enemy. See that? Right. It's the greatest enemy of evolution. You add more time, guess what? You add more second law of thermodynamics. So Genesis 1.1, here's your answer. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's common sense in everyday life. That's realistically speaking. That's even scientifically proven. Law of biogenesis, life comes from life. Yeah. It is common sense, a scientific principle, but more impo importantly, a biblical principle. That when there is something that's created, okay, there has to be a creator. Someone has to put all the things together for you. That explains the best.